Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we are working on No Trevi, and this is page eight. Page eight. Okay, so I've got my paper. Oh, I forgot to ink. I'm sorry, you guys are gonna have to watch me ink. <laughs> but I do have my tape on. So we have two panels, uh, two flaps, left and a right, and then we have a pocket. So it's gonna be just like page one. Different paper, different designer paper, but same uh, mechanisms. So we start by putting our flaps in, then we add our pocket. And let's see, I gotta double check. Okay, so the large flap is gonna go to the left hand side. The large flap is five by eight. Five by eight, you're gonna score half inch on the five inch side. Yeah, I should dry fit this, make sure. Yep. I always like to double check to make sure it's not uh, longer than the pocket page itself so that you don't have any of these little edges sticking off. <clears throat> okay. I like to tack down one corner and pivot uh, the flap until it's level um, and then I get this nice tight fit. So it's just a technique I use. Um, some people like to just take off part of the tape and then line it up and then um, pull it out. And I'll show you that technique right now too, which is kind of the same idea. Um, I, I hold it off the page uh, and pivot it. Um, and in this case, you don't have to hold it off because it's not gonna grab down here. So you place your corner, you do the same technique where you pivot till it's even. And then you pull your tab. And I'm going to double check one more time because I had to reach in there to grab my tab. Okay. And then you just pull this like it's a zipper. So there's both techniques. Um, I find the other one easier, um, but it's just a matter of preference. Okay, so we have our left and right flaps, and now we're going to add a pocket. And on page one, I let it grab before I was ready. <laughs> so I am going to take off my side, uh, be a little bit more careful about um, placing my pocket, making sure I'm holding it off the base page. <clears throat> Center it and then lay it down. So again, the way I do it is I'm holding it up off the paper before I'm ready. But if you're not comfortable with that, you leave, you create those little tabs and then you line it up and pull them out. Now, in this case, you would have to have a tab, three tabs, left, right, and bottom. Okay. And it closes nicely. All right. Now, page one, I kind of thought I forgot something because I didn't create a magnet. There is a half inch overlap between these two. So that's not enough to place a magnet. So we are going to determine where our magnet's going to be after we add an embellishment. So this is what I have designed. So it's going to go like this. <clears throat> so, so we have this full picture of the lady here. Mahogany powder puff. It's my favorite, favorite color. I use it on everything. So you can see how light this pattern is and it still works. Um, I would recommend going lighter if you're somebody who likes to distress into the pattern. I pretty much just want to knock off my white core. Um, but I think this might be a little too dark for this collection if you like to distress into the paper. And you can see I go very light, very little distressing into the paper because it is pretty dark. Um, okay, let's see. How do I want to do this? Like this. Okay, and then these are <clears throat> the inside. So both of these are coming from one of the two 12 by 12 collect uh, packs from Chow Bella. So they have a collection pack and then they have a patterns pack. And I immediately scramble them all up. So I'm not sure, but I'm, the size of, and the scale, I'm guessing that this is from uh, 
the 12 by 12 collection pack, not the patterns pack. And then what's going on the inside is from the eight by eight pack. I promptly mixed them all up. <laughs> the, the, all the ones that are 12 by 12. Not on purpose, it just happened when I was trying to do my uh, paper coordination. So unfortunately I can't give you that level of detail, which I try to do in all my uh, projects, but in this case it's just not gonna work out. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the inside first, and that gives me a little bit of time to think about how I'm going to manage my closure on uh, the two flaps. I have to be clever because the pattern is so strong on the, on the two flaps, I don't wanna um, interrupt it. Okay, everything looks like it fits fine, so. Let's go ahead and get it glued in. Hope everybody's doing well. It is warm and sticky here in San Diego, which is a little unusual. We don't usually get this much humidity. I mean, we're really kind of a desert normally, so it's a little unusual. <clears throat> okay, so this uh, I'm going to have to trim just a little bit. So if you um, have already built page one, you realize that I had to trim down my pocket a little bit so that the flaps would close over it. And um, because of that, I had trimmed these out to be the full width so it doesn't fit inside the pocket, uh, which I was planning on doing. Um, so now it's just going to be butt right up against the entrance of the pocket. But that means I can't push it in and that means I have to trim it off. Okay. And of course, because I have this continuous pattern, I'm always going to trim from the top so I don't interrupt the complete image. If you trim down here, you would be interrupting the, the pattern. If that makes sense, that should. You guys are probably all pros at that by now and know which sides to trim from. <clears throat> there we go, and there's our beautiful continuous pattern. And I haven't picked out these papers yet. <clears throat> This and this. So it's likely that I'm going to add an embellishment piece here. Something not too, not too obvious. I've got some stamps that we could use, but whatever I decide to put here is where the magnet's going to be hidden on this side. That's probably a little too small. Let's see what else I got in here. There's some beautiful cut aparts in this collection. Um, and I may, so I like that. That's likely what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna place a magnet behind this, glue it to this, and then the magnet will go behind here. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. And I'm gonna flatten this just a little. There's a little curve because of the pocket. Score that down a little bit. So let's go ahead and add this. I can't place it, I think I went over that. I can't place it behind one of the flaps because there's only a half inch overlap and that's not enough space to get the magnet and get it covered. Okay, so what did I do with that? Here it is. I just think this is so pretty. So let's put both our patterns in so we have a good idea. I want to make sure wherever I place it, I'm not overlapping something significant. And I think that's going to do it. Yeah, I like that. So I'm just going to draw a slight line here and here the corner and that's where I'll line it up and then I'm going to flip it over 
and make sure when you flip it over to determine where your glue goes that you're going end over end and not left to right because then you'll have the glue on the wrong side of the um, embellishment. End over end. I'm going to use this to make sure I'm going in straight. And I am. So I'm going to do a little tick mark here, here. And I know my glue has to be on the right hand side of those two marks. Okay. Now go end over end again. And I'm going to line it up with my pencil marks here. I'm going to go slightly over them so I don't have to erase them. <clears throat> and then I'm going to use the Tim Holtz ruler one more time just to make sure it's going in straight. And it needs to be adjusted slightly. We're in. Okay, just double checking on the back side to make sure that there is no glue that's going to come across. There we go. Now we can place our magnet here. I think that's about right. I like to use 5 8 inch tape to cover my magnets. Um, it softens the edges. And... Uh, I just think it, the edges, it, they're not beveled, so it's a very sharp edge otherwise, and you could wear it around the edge of the magnet um, and have it, you know, really show up behind your designer paper. That's why I like to cover it with tape. It just sort of artificially softens the edges. And I use double-sided tape, but you don't have to. You could even use scotch tape right here if you if you're using the basic gray magnets, but anything over it, masking tape, anything to soften it. Okay. Sorry, I dropped something. Okay, now I'm gonna close this and find where the second magnet needs to be adhered. There it is, okay. Normally I like to put my magnets on the inside and I think on page one that's what I did, but um, the other thing I like is to have the magnet attraction have as few layers of paper as possible. So sometimes I break that rule and um, put it on the top on the designer page or the, the A side, like in this case. Okay, make sure you get some glue over your tape because it's going to want to grab before anything else on your paper does. This will allow you just a few moments to slide your paper into position. The great thing about art glitter glue is it dries fast. The awful thing about art glitter glue is it dries fast. So you kind of have to learn to work with it. I, I wouldn't use anything else, but you do have to work pretty quickly. There we go. Okay. I like that. Okay, now we still have to cover this and put a little strip of something interesting here. So I'll be back in a few minutes with that. Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we are gonna wrap up here on page eight. Sorry, I'm doing a little bit of housekeeping. So I've got my uh, B-sides planned out. And I think this is really pretty, but I think it's too busy to put photos on. So I'm doing something simple here. I am going to use this beautiful um, print here to go cover the back of that embellishment piece. I can't remember what this flower is called. Oh, somebody will tell me in the comments. I know what it is as soon as I hear it. Um, sorry, I'm looking for my pick tool and I don't see it anywhere. Hmm. I don't know what I did with it, guys. Oh, it was upside down. That's why I didn't recognize it. Okay, let's go ahead and add this little bit here first. Oh, 
Okay, let's do a little quick dry fit. Looks good. This is from the 12 by 12 pack. I don't know if it's the collection pack or the patterns. I think it's the collection pack just based on the scale. Yeah, it is. So this is the 6x6 version. This is the 12x12 version. I said 6x6. I meant 8x8. There is a 6x6 pack, and that's why there's so much, so many different sizes with Chabella. So you have the 12x12 collection pack, 12x12 patterns pack, 8 by 8 collection pack, a 6 by 6 collection pack, and then there's also an A4 pack, which has different prints. And then on the flip sides of all the um, A4s are cut aparts, tags, uh, buttons, just lots of stuff to use it as to embellish your projects. These papers are really pretty. Okay, now we, we're going to do some inserts. I don't have those ready yet. Um, I've got these from the uh, collection pack. We have these cut aparts. So I'm going to probably put a couple of cut aparts in this pocket of various sizes. And then uh, this is page eight and I do the same thing on page one. Okay, that's it for page eight. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. This is Daphne from Scrap and Create.